Hi everyone, this is going to be a very quick tutorial on how to import data into Vapor. Vapor supports certain data types, and this is going to be probably the shortest tutorial I'll ever do on how to load these natively supported data sets into Vapor. So, like I said, uh, Vapor natively supports uh, these following data formats. If your data is WORF ARW, NetCDF, that is CF compliant, uh, and that's a caveat. It, Vapor doesn't read all net CDF data. It must be CF compliant. And so if Vapor is having trouble reading your data, uh, see below and I'll put some links into how to massage your data, uh, your net CDF data, so that it does adhere to these compliance standards that we uh, need in order to read your data into Vapor. But um, yeah, aside from WARF ARW, net CDF, we also can directly read impasse A and impasse O data. And we can also import a data format called brick of values or BOV or also known as raw binary data. If you have a bunch of files and each file describes one variable at one time step and it's just a series of floating point values or double precision floating point values or even integers, we kind of consider that to be a raw binary data format. And you can write a header file, which is the, the BOV header file that describes the structure of your grid, the size of your domain, and a few other things. If you can write a 10 line BOV header file, uh, Vapor can read that header file and then reference your raw binary data and read it um, through the direct importation menu that I'm going to go through in just a second. But the last data format uh, is called the Data Collection Particles, or DCP for short, and that one deserves its own video, which I'm going to uh, reserve for later. So uh, those are the natively supported data formats, and to demonstrate uh, the importation of them, I'm going to go to the, my bottom menu, click on my V for my uh, Vapor application, and here we have the default uh, screen, everything is disabled, and the control panel on the left, and the visualizer window is grayed out on the, on the right because there is no data. So the first thing we always do is we go to the file menu and we have to get data into Vapor to visualize anything. So I'll click on file, scroll down to import, and here we have our list of data flavors that Vapor can currently, as of 3.5, read. Uh, for this example, I'm going to click on netcdf cf, and this will give me a uh, file dialog where I can navigate to my CF compliant net CDF data. So I have my files all the way down here. I'll click on all of them. Each one of my files represents a single time step. Uh, they don't have to, um, but mine do. I'll click on open. And immediately we can see our data domain. I can right click to scroll out, left click to rotate the scene. And then, uh, of course, I should make a renderer um, just for demonstration's sake. So I'll go to my new menu, and I'll make a volume renderer by clicking on my volume button and OK. And I'll turn it on. And here we have our first rendering of our NetCDF CF compliant file. We are looking at the variable dbz, simulated reflectivity. And I think I grabbed maybe like, I don't know, eight files. I can animate through those times or those files through time by clicking on this play button. And here you can see all those files being animated um, in time series. And I can play them backwards because the data should be cached and should be faster this time, a little bit faster. So um, yeah, that's the basics. It's just clicking on the file menu, import, and then pick your flavor. And then as long as your data is adherent to the, the standards of WORF ARW, impasse, CF compliant, that's CDF, and uh, the standards that, that we um, document and require for the BOV file format, you should be able to easily load your data. But again, I'll put links um, below if your data does not conform to things like the CF compliance um, standards or what we need in a BOV header file. So I hope you found that useful and I'll see you for the next video. Thank you.